Hi, welcome to the Magnetic Mismatch Show. My name is Linda. And I'm Will. <laughs> Hi, Will. Hi. What's going on? <laughs> How's your like, Sunday? It's kind of like those conference with your name tag. Hi, <laughs> my name is Linda. Hi. Damn, it's Will. not that bad, is it? Hello, my name is Will. That's like very robotic. Stand up and give Will very an stiff. applause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, damn. You didn't have to clown me that hard. Jeez. Okay, I'll I'll do better next time. <laughs> yeah. But how's your Sunday going? It's good. Um, we went home to see my parents this weekend. Per usual. Per usual. I try to see them <laughs> once a week, every Sunday, mm -hmm. as much as I can. Um, just because they feed us really well. Oh, I mean, I mean, we love them, but <laughs> man. But their cooking is. Yeah. It's always nice to have a home cooked meal for sure. Yeah. Home cooked meal. That's like, that's the prop, uh, pro, like bonus, I mean. Yeah, know? it's definitely uh, a bonus. I almost said that's the proposition, like for them to get us to come home and visit them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love hanging out with them. We even got a boba. Oh yeah, yeah that's a whole story. Yours. We're we're gonna get into that for sure. <laughs> it's it's this uh, specialty shop, right? A chain from yeah, it's Taiwan. Yeah, a chain from Taiwan. Yeah, super popular out there. Yeah. Since we didn't get to go to Taiwan this year. No. But it's okay. We'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> it kind of ties to the topic today. For sure. So what are we talking about? So the topic today is just learning to be grateful in life. Yeah. And I think um, especially at a time like right now where it's very chaotic because of the coronavirus affecting many, many people, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think it's a good time to ground yourself and be able to think things through properly. Instead of just panicking or letting yeah. fear take over and all that. But it's a reminder too, right? It is. Of. A, yeah, I mean, you always have to prepare, right? But um, I think there's a difference between preparing and just going into a mode of panic where you're making decisions that does not make sense. Mm -hmm. right? I think it's, it's, and more so just on the topic of gratefulness, it's like it's being grateful for things like your health. Yeah. Being grateful that, you know, thank God we're we're out here. It's gonna it's impacting the world, but at least we're not in that red hot zone. You know, yeah. of like Wuhan or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you you hear all these crazy stories. Can you imagine being a resident in that city right now? It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and we have to be grateful for the technologies that we do have. So even if it comes to a point where we do get quarantined at home. Right, we have running water, which a lot of countries still don't till this day. We have um, a ref running refrigerator because we'll mm -hmm. still have electricity, so we could store food, yeah. frozen food, whatever we need to to get through the the quarantine if it comes to that. Yeah, that we have the luxury point. of going to Costco, even though right now it's like oh, crazy, crazy lines. <laughs> <laughs> and they're running out of bottled water and toilet paper, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the world's coming to an end, so we got to stock up on toilet paper. <laughs> First thing, right? Priorities. Oh my gosh, news. <laughs> yeah, but Burglar just even... Burglar breaks into house for toilet just paper. still put toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we joke about it. I mean, it's very it's a serious, serious matter, of course. Matter, of course. And, you know, our heart goes out to all the ones that have been affected. For sure. I but, mean, that must be scary as hell, dude. Yeah. 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 But just being grateful. Right. And mm -hmm. being, um, I think, just more deliberate. Right. About practicing gratitude, because I would say that even for us, it was never about like, we're not the type of people that were ungrateful for things that we have. Yeah, definitely. But I felt like for me personally, I never really thought of like, every day, you know, training myself to think about what am I grateful for? man, I've got it pretty damn good here because, you know, sometimes you get, you have a bad day or um, something doesn't go your way and we tend to start complaining or losing sight of the important things in life. Um, and sometimes you don't realize how good we actually have it until you make sure it's actually something you're deliberately focusing on, right? Yeah, And I think it's just, the way 
we kind of trained ourselves, right? Yeah. It's just life is always on the go. What's the next task? What's the next event? Where do I have to go next? But we never take a moment of our time to just be grateful for the present moment and for the things you already have. Yeah. Instead of just the things you're chasing after. Yeah. I mean, we're guilty of that, mm-hmm. right? You and I, we grew up in East LA. Mm-hmm. We we didn't ha- we didn't grow up with much, so we were always chasing for the next income, the next number, the next raise, the next luxury items because we didn't have that. So it was always a chase for us. Um, but something felt missing, even right. though I got to that number, I got that luxury item, I got that purse whatever that is that I was drooling over. Especially, right, coming from a background where, uh, you know, income wasn't as high or we didn't have as many resources and all those. You see, like, people with the luxury items or the things that you want, like a house or a nice car, a nice watch. A nice um, purse, (laughs) nice shoes. Yeah. Designer clothing. Even things like prestige. Or traveling. Or traveling. You know, people get to go to these amazing places around the world. Yeah. And you can only dream of it. And that's awesome. I think it's great that you, you're you chasing something. We all need to have something to chase in life. Um, otherwise, you're kind of aimlessly wandering. Wandering. Right. But I, I see what you're saying is like we're busy and we're focused on the chase, but we're forgetting to be in the moment. And to be grateful for what we do have at that moment. At that moment already. Yeah. Uh, Cause you could always want more or you can always make more money. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I think when we like we had a certain number in, in terms of income that we had in our minds that we kind of say, and I think a lot of people maybe can relate to this, where mm-hmm. it's like, if I can just make this amount of money, I'll be happy. Yep, I'll be happy. All my problems will go away. <laughs> yeah, I will be able to afford everything I want. Yeah. It's not true. And you can buy a lot of the things I can. that you want. I can. I'm very grateful. But once you have it. The high goes away very fast. Right. Like it's fleeting and it's you realize that getting to that level or that income or whatever, you achieved your goal, it doesn't really fill you up. It doesn't really provide you with fulfillment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even though the old you 10 years ago would have been like, you have everything. You have everything. You have everything. You know? What are you complaining about? Why are you always so unhappy? Because the problem is once you get there, then you're looking at, well, what's the next thing? How yeah. do I get more? How do I get more? So it's like a vicious cycle for it really sure. Is. So the reason why, you know, we started looking into self-development was. Because I, we felt that way. Yeah, we felt that way, especially me. Mm-hmm. I spent. You struggled with that. I for sure. struggled with that for probably like almost what two years, I would say. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you saw. I just became less and less happy. I used to. I mean, I'm always a happy person, but I just felt empty. I was always constantly just chasing for the next investment, the next raise, the next this, the next that, but. And you accomplished a lot. And that's the thing. That's why like from the outside looking, I'm like, what are you? Why are you so unhappy? Yeah. Or why are you so unhappy? And I didn't say that directly to you. It was more like just an observation because it's hard to understand. And I never felt proud of myself. Right. Um, I just felt. You always felt behind. I always felt behind in life. Compared to other people. Comparing myself to other people. Um, You know, and it's crazy. Because from the outside in, you're like, you know, most people would be like, why are you complaining? You have everything. Everything is so nice. You have that nice house. You have that luxury car. You have your designer goods. You you travel the world. Why are you so unhappy? And I I couldn't explain that to myself. That feeling. That feeling of just emptiness. And, you know, and then I would talk about it and then I would feel like I was crazy. Yeah, because a lot of people don't understand it. Yeah. Like, well, how, why do you feel that way? Where does it come from? Yeah, and I, 
and I couldn't understand and I didn't want to come off ungrateful. So I would suppress these feelings. And the more I did, the more I was just looking into my next high, right? My next achievement. Because I think in your mind, you think that just by accomplishing that next thing or buying that next thing would give you the emotions mm -hmm. that you're looking for, that you're missing. Yeah. But in reality, that's not what's going to solve the problem. Right. It yeah. wasn't going to be the, the thing. And we didn't know the answer at that time. Um, and that's like you said, why we started going down to in the path of self-development, which I'm so grateful for research and just seeing, yeah. well, there are a lot of people that have figured it out. Really smart, successful people that have the money, have the lifestyle and they are genuinely happy yeah. with their lives beyond you know, the material stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when you start reading about the advice that they give and what their journey was. Or what they started doing. So we started copying them. them. Yeah. Um, copying their habits. Yeah, their morning habits. And I think we've implemented this journey of ours for about a year now. Over a year now. A little yeah. bit over mm -hmm. a year since we got married. Um, and you can see the significant difference in my attitude and the way I view life and how calmer I am. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Big time. I'm not, you know, just upset that things aren't going my way all the time. Mm -hmm. it's and so, so do you think, sorry, that, do you think that gratefulness is that the big thing that yeah, changed? Definitely. I think now that I've been able to take a, a moment back to really just truly appreciate, you know, how far I've gone in life, and, you know, and just thanking myself for um, working so hard, thanking myself for, you know, getting myself out of a certain situation, right? Just taking out of that poverty. Yeah. And just really thanking and just being grateful. My God, I have so much. I've done so much. And I don't take that moment to, just thank myself and thank the universe for providing that, right? Yeah. I think uh, we're a lot of times we're our own biggest critic mm -hmm. and we're so hard on ourselves that even if you accomplish things that are important to you, and it may not be that way to, to everybody, right? Like what you accomplish may not seem that important to somebody else, but if it's important to you, you need to give yourself that recognition and mm -hmm. that pat on the back you know because if yeah. you don't then it feels like you're constantly in that rat race you know yeah you're, you're constantly never getting that validation from yourself and that fulfillment yeah uh, so that was one of the things but i think when we're mindful of being grateful having that attitude mm -hmm. right of gratitude and practicing that every single day because that's one of the things that we put into place into our schedule every yeah, day. Every day now. So we have a structured, like an hour, right? Probably, yeah, about an hour. Yeah. Like where we went, as soon as we wake up, we have a morning ritual that we do. And that helps us get our mind right. And it starts with gratitude. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a journey because we attempted that. <laughs> we failed. We failed <laughs> the miserably. first time. Yeah. It was very difficult because we were. Um, doing it for some days and then some days it's like sorry i woke up late gotta go to work your schedule was changing My a lot schedule was changing a lot it just didn't work but and i think we we gave ourselves a lot of excuses too we it's did. just like anything right we did. like it's like oh it's too early I would, I, I would rather sleep that extra 30 minutes yeah or oh i had a late night so you know I thought uh, we could just skip that we could just skip it it's okay it's we okay. kind of told each other it's okay and that's where we failed right yeah. it was and and failing just meant that we didn't uh stay consistent mm -hmm. um i think we we gave ourselves credit for at least trying yeah. to break out of our normal routine which we didn't have a routine i mean i guess we did have a routine it it's just chaos. wasn't yeah, it was chaos, chaos in the morning. morning chaos. And yeah, there was no thought behind it. It was just reactive, right? You just get ready for work and you rush out the door. And I think that's a lot of us, you know, because we're not taught how to organize your morning or how to start your morning the right way. Yeah. So 
can you tell us, tell people maybe a little bit about what we do, you know, mm -hmm. for that morning ritual that's helped us in terms of gratitude and where that gets incorporated? Yeah, I think our morning starts with grooming, right? Showering. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think for everybody, that should be number one. I mean, I think that's you gotta shower, man. Take take care of yourself. Yes. Take care of my skin. Um, and then that probably takes most of that hour. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> It's only like 10 steps. Here. For me, it's like, you know, just comb my hair, put some gel on, wash Don't my lie. face, all you that stuff. You have a ritual going too oh, yeah. for your skincare. Don't I've lie. I've better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just, um, so self-care. Taking care of yourself, self -care yeah. Self-care is one. And then after that, we start our morning with a nice hot coffee. Um, and if you're not a coffee drinker, then tea, whatever you want. And hydrate. And then um, we start by writing in our journal. Yeah, so we have a gratitude journal, and they're pretty inexpensive. You can, or you can just use a notebook, a really. Notebook. Yeah. Like ours, the one that we have has like little quotes of the day, to kind of inspirational quotes, and it, it's a nice way for us to remind ourselves of gratitude. Yeah, and we write down each of us. We write down th three things that we are grateful now, and one grateful intention. So, what are we? grateful for in the future but we write it in present tense sure like how would you write it so let's say if you're working a nine to five and your intentions or for yourself is let's say um to have more freedom um to work a job where you set your own schedule so you will write i am so grateful now that i can I can work anywhere and any uh, moments that I want to, right? Or the schedule that I set for myself. So you write it as a present tense. As if you're already there, that you already have that freedom. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's that's super helpful. Because then is. like subconsciously your brain starts working so that your behaviors start matching that, right? Yeah. And I write the same intentions every day. <laughs> <laughs> I've been noticing your pattern lately. It's, oh, I want to have that freedom or this or that, you know, yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah, but same. it's the same wording of the same things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we do that. And then we do a little bit of uh, morning meditation. Yes, for like 15 minutes. Yeah. Just quieting the mind. It's a guided meditation too, so it's really yeah. nice. And then um, that's how we start the morning. So, and then on the grateful side, on the journal with the three things that we list out, um, what's interesting is that as you do this, and we, like you said, you know, we've been doing this um, journal over for year. over a year yeah. and this ritual, um, what we found was that the stuff we ended up writing in the journal that we're grateful for every day, it's pretty basic stuff. That's where we're like, what? It's like, I'm grateful to have a bed to sleep in. <laughs> I'm grateful for this warm, cozy house. Right. And I was surprised at myself because like when I thought about what am I grateful for, it wasn't like all the the stuff that you would probably think of like, oh, like my nice car or watch nice or watch, this or that. This and, you know, yeah. the stuff that's very luxury or, or uh, I don't know, just what you realize is you're, you become grateful for having just the basic stuff um, that like you said earlier, a lot of people around the world don't have clean water, heat, right, in your house, mm -hmm. having a roof over your head. And those are things that sometimes we have so much that we don't realize. How much we have. We do have, exactly. Yeah. Because we can complain, you know, like they, like before it was like the first world problems that people would joke about. Yeah. You know, you watch th these videos where people have to go fetch waters for miles and the, that's the reason why they can't go to school is because they're yeah what's that show called uh I, that's a different show i think oh. we're talking about where the kids have to walk like three days to go to school that's a different show but there are sh you know other documentaries where yeah. they talk about how mostly women um they would have to um 
get water, walk miles and miles to fetch water for their family. And that's the reason why they miss out on From school. like a well or something? Yeah, on education <laughs> is to get water. And here we have water just running on a tap yeah, and you, we take it for granted. <laughs> you turn on a faucet and boom, you've got clean water coming out of your the pipes. Yeah, you know? and you know, education is so accessible now to us, especially with the internet. We can learn anything you want. It's crazy. Yeah, for free most of the time. That's the problem, though, is that there's so much uh, available to us, so many options and so many resources that what ends up happening is people don't even use those resources because there's so many. Yeah. I don't know. It's like you get overwhelmed. Yeah. But then, yet, yeah, you know, there are places where kids walk three days they would love to yeah. go to school. Yeah. Right, just to have basic education man, can to you, change their lives. Can you imagine, you know, you're talking about the water situation. If like you had to go fetch water every morning just to take a shower, oh my God. like hot, and then you got to hot, like warm it up, right? Um, yeah. And all that. Well, let's be real. You wouldn't be doing any of that. It would be you. It would be me. It, <laughs> no, but yeah. You would, you'd be making me go get, get that water yeah, for sure. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and that would only be for one person, you first, probably. And then, <laughs> oh, okay, you, you could figure it out. Go from there. Uh, yeah, but that's true. Yeah. Like, just something as simple as that. Water. Clean water. Clean water. Clothes, mm -hmm. you know? So. We could do laundry right here in our <laughs> unit. In I, our house. Right. But, but you don't think about these things. No. You know what I mean? Like through the course of the day, um, while you're just kind of living your life and, and all this stuff, mm -hmm. other things take up your mind and you don't stop for a moment to realize, man, we have it really, really good. If yeah. you're living out here in the U.S. or, you know, in a, any sort of modern uh, society, right? It's not a third world country or anything like that. Uh, we have so much. Yeah. And yet uh, sometimes we're guilty of not appreciating it not maybe not intentionally but it's more like we take it for granted. we over yeah we yeah. take it for granted we, we overlook it do. and that's really important though that we do take the time to be grateful and slow down a little bit and appreciate or at least just recognize how how lucky we all are right how fortunate we are even just having life you know being here is a miracle being a, waking Alive. up the next day is a miracle. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So as much as we have going on in our lives, and we all have you know stuff to deal with all the time, right? Yeah. That's life. Um, as bad as it can be, I think when you're grateful and you have that attitude of trying to find the good in in life, it helps tremendously in everything else. And I've seen the big change for for you, for, for myself too. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to that, once we've started pra practicing gratitude more deliberately. Yeah, and I think it helps with also um, with the way you react to certain situations too, right? When you're grateful, you're not always just so reactive, mm. even when things go wrong, <laughs> which we, ha we, I mean, we've been tested this year. <laughs> The last couple of years, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the last, probably starting the end of last year. Yeah. We've been tested just to see how we would respond. Mm hmm Right? <laughs> so, for example, so what you're referencing, what, the Germany trip or or the, the Europe trip? Well, actually, the last three trips. Yeah. We, we travel a lot. So, one of the big things that we did last year, and this was something that you and I had been planning uh, for a little while that we wanted to do something really nice for our parents. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents uh, have been immigrated to, uh, from other countries to the U.S. They've been here for um, most of their lives now, right? Well, yeah. Several decades at least. Yeah, like 20. Yeah, <laughs> my, my parents kidding. are like, a little bit more, oh, okay, I'm just kidding. you're older Probably than that. <laughs> <laughs> like... Actually, like three decades. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So they've been here for a little while yeah. and they they, you know... Because of the, you know, just uh, having a family, having kids, raising kids and uh, being immigrants and not having as many resources and things like that, right? They didn't have 
as much as we do now. Mm-hmm. Um, they sacrificed so much so that we could have the life that we have today. Um, but they went through a lot of that and travel for was, luxury. It's a luxury. Like the, it just never happened. It was in, if unless it was maybe like a family thing that they needed to go somewhere. Yeah. Then fine, but for for fun, nah, no way, no way. So they no never way really. Would they have spent that money. Would have gone to us to college or for something, right? Something. They couldn't afford to do it mm-hmm. for fun. So we knew that um, we wanted to do something nice for them to thank them for raising us and for sacrificing for us to have what we have today. Because we wouldn't have our life today if it wasn't for them. So mm-hmm. we paid for their uh, a trip. To Italy. To Italy. We took my parents. We took your parents. Um, so it was the six of us that we flew out and we stayed in Italy for a week. A week. Eight days to be exact. Yeah. Eight days in Italy. And then we extended the trip for my parents to go to Germany because as crazy as that so- it sounds in over, what, 30 years being in America, mm-hmm. my parents has never seen where their siblings live my mom's well because your sibling her siblings got separated during during the war the vietnam war right so he lives in germany and your mom's brother my mom's brother Uh he lives in germany and we live here in the u.s right and my mom has never seen where he lives isn't that crazy yeah you would think at some point during that time yeah so i made it happen for them for her to be able to see. It's kind of exciting. It was fun. Yeah. It was so fun. I was that, so happy. And we chose Italy too um, because your dad also wanted to see... Uh, Rome. Yes. The Vatican. Right. Yeah. So we've helped him fulfill one of his bucket list items too. So that was really cool. And fun fact, we got engaged in Italy. <laughs> in Florence. In Florence. Yeah. That's right. I yeah. did good. So <laughs> you did good. We'll, we'll save that for another topic. <laughs> we'll go through the detail on that one yeah. next time. But um, but yeah, so we had a blast on the trip. We had a blast. Everything was great. Everything was great. And then the <laughs> day before we were supposed to fly out, what happened? Okay, so we were on... Fly a, back home, I mean. Yeah, so we were on a, a train from um, France back to Germany. Will decides to check in right check in the flight and when we went onto the website we found out that the company went bankrupt Thomas our Cook. airline went bankrupt <laughs> the day before we're supposed to fly back home to la from germany yeah <laughs> it was unbelievable it was the thomas cook airlines yeah and they they never sent an email letting us know. No notice, nothing. No notice, nothing. We had no idea. We had no clue. Man, I'm like so thankful. We, I, like we were trying to check in and and just check um, the Can flights. Can you imagine and going to the airport? <laughs> yeah, like what the hell's going on? Like why are there, you know, this, why is there this chaos right now? Yeah. I know it was crazy, and it, you know that airline is a huge airline. It's been around for one hundred and forty years. Yeah, something, something, something like over a hundred years. years yeah. yeah. So that was, was like, what? You got to be kidding me, you know? And so we were scrambling, trying to figure out what we needed to do. We had to call the the travel agency, which we booked through um, our bank. Yeah. Or Chase, basically. So that helped, and then um, they were able to get us some of the money back but then because we wanted to we had to buy new tickets to fly back home Mm -hmm. on a different airline that wasn't bankrupt yeah we had to pay a premium basically double the price of the original tickets yeah and for worse seats too worse seats because we upgraded our parents and ourselves to Um, um, premium seatings right because we wanted our parents to be comfortable yeah they're a little bit older and so yeah so we upgraded everyone to premium premium seatings yeah but um, so we had to rebook and we had the only ones, only tickets available were economy tickets. Right. I mean, Which, it's not end of the world. No. But. It just sucked because we, we paid. Double the price. Double the price for economy tickets, you know. Yeah. So, but we were just grateful, right? But in that moment, you know, we had to take a step back and be grateful that there's even a flight for us to go home because yeah. the flights were 
were getting filled. Yeah, like they were um, running out of flights. As soon as we could have been stranded. Yeah, I mean, as soon as we were trying to check out for some of the airlines, um, our like the flights would be full, and we weren't able to completely fully checked out. So it was a blessing that we were all able to go home on the same flight. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, we did have to stay like an extra, an extra day. Yeah. But at the fact, you know, <laughs> what do we do? What we, do we do? So being grateful <laughs> that you know, uh, one, we were there with family, mm -hmm. uh, that we were even blessed enough to take a trip like that and yeah. to be able to take our parents right to cross off a bucket list. Um, so just being grateful for all of that, and we just figured, you know what, let's make the best out of those bad situation. And we ended up going to Oktoberfest, <laughs> which ended up was happening at that time. We didn't plan for we that either. Plan it for just it. happened to be Oktoberfest. So we just went and had a blast <laughs> we did. on the day that we were stranded. <laughs> Why not, right? And then we flew home the next day. Yeah. Yeah. But I think what helped us to keep our cool and just to put things in perspective was because we learned how to practice gratitude and it became more natural to just try to see, it shifted our perspective and our outlook a lot, right? It helped us anytime, like you said, in those situations to calm down and to just see where's the positive in this. Yeah. Instead of just complaining, yelling and- Panicking. Panicking, being fearful. And right? then ruining the trip. I don't want that to be the memory of, of this amazing trip that, that we, we planned had, for yeah. our family. Right. Yeah. I want to remember it for all the bonding experience that we had with the two the parents, fun dinners. the fun dinners, the conversations, yeah. the experience of being in Europe. Mm -hmm. Just um, taking a trip together. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hard in itself. That was know, a to bring blessing. people together. Yeah. That was such a blessing to be able to do for them. Yes. Right. It felt so good to be able to give something to our parents that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they really deserve and that we're thankfully in position financially to be able to do something like that for yeah. them. Because, you know, it's it's not something that everybody can do. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very grateful that we're able to have that opportunity. Yeah. And that they didn't complain at all when they were there because Europe, you got to do a lot, <laughs> a of, lot walking. of walking. And I was surprised. Yeah, your dad was like <laughs> moving like crazy. We were like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And they even um, adopted some of the good habits from yeah, Europe. Yeah, so some really good stuff came out of that. My parents, they walk together a mile every morning now together. After the trip. After yeah. the trip, which so I am really cool. very grateful for because it made them healthier. Absolutely. Right? So that's going to help in the long run too. But let's backtrack a little. So we've always wanted to take um, our parents on a trip. That was a given. Mm -hmm. But what really kind of expedited that um, uh, that journey or for that planning to happen was in uh, a couple months before that, probably like four months before that, uh, Will and I, we had a trip with our friends to Japan. Yes. It was we were supposed to meet our friends um in Japan and the day before we were about to leave um my dad had a an emergency. He was in the hospital and we weren't sure, you know, what was going to happen, but luckily after 3 days um everything cleared and they sent him home. Mm -hmm. Right? And that kind of reminded us how short life is and if we are going to do something nice for them or a, you know a trip like this we need to make that happen soon and sooner rather than later yeah because we because you know the older our parents get it's you know time is very precious yeah um so as soon as my dad got the the clearance from his cardiologist and all of his specialists and his doctors, um, we just make the trip happen, right? Yeah, Within yeah. the next couple months, as soon as the clearance was there, mm -hmm. we're like, we need a, the moment is now. Right. Yeah, and so something unfortunate like that happening ended up being the trigger, right? That mm -hmm. led to something even better. Even better. Which was the family trip, the yeah. opportunity to share some 
unbelievable and you know uh long lasting memories yeah that we wouldn't otherwise have so that was really really nice yeah so just being grateful that you know my parents are healthy yes right? being grateful that we're healthy right right and we we were actually we were supposed to be in Japan today <laughs> oh man <laughs> Well, in Taiwan. And Taiwan. That's why we were like, all um, right. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually supposed to be in Japan today, but um, due to the, the coronavirus, it's uh, We just, decided it wasn't a good idea. It's not a good time mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we just didn't want to take the risk of getting stranded in another country or um, putting ourselves at increased risk at this moment just because we interact with a lot of people and right. especially you know older people uh we just didn't want to take the the risk of contracting the the virus and spreading it to other spreading people. it to other people yeah because even though they say that the coronavirus or COVID 19 um mm -hmm. most people that have been infected or at least a lot of them they've been able to recover from it um, especially the people that are younger that have stronger immune systems. So even if worst case, someone our age and with good health contracted something like this, they probably get over it and recover from it. Yeah. The issue though is our parents, our relatives that are older, our clients, our clients yeah. and patients that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just thought about that and it's like, no, we can't have that you know, that we don't want to have that responsibility all fall on us and on our conscience if something were to happen. And it's just not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's kind of the conclusion we made. Yeah. So, well, but we still have that time, right? Yeah. Blocked off. So So technically you're on vacation for two weeks. Yeah, I am. <laughs> which I'm grateful it's, for. Right. Mental mental break. Yes. Um and I'm grateful because I'm gonna get to see my parents a little bit more often. This, these this next week, two weeks. Yeah. See my parents, see some friends and maybe some family members. Mm -hmm. Hang out with you 24-7. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm so grateful for that. Of course. Extra time together. Yeah. yeah. Yay. <laughs> you hear the excitement? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think. Um, and we totally could have reacted in a different way. And I think. In the past, old Will would have probably gotten really annoyed. Mm -hmm. And not that I wasn't annoyed this time, but it was much easier to get moved past it. You know, in the past, you know, like I would dwell on stuff. Yeah. Especially if it's negative. I just wouldn't be able to let it go. It would eat me up and I'd just be, I'd feel angry, disappointed, right? Like especially this being the second time, uh, unfortunately, that we attempted to go to Japan and it didn't happen. I could have looked at it totally in a different way, but because we've been practicing gratitude and learning to be grateful for just even, again, having the opportunity to book a trip like that, mm -hmm. hey, if we don't go this time, that's okay. We'll have more opportunities in the future. Yeah. And I'd rather us all be safe and have our health because that's what matters mm -hmm. um, than to try and risk it just for, you know, a trip that, we planned and it didn't you know we don't want to force the situation is what i'm trying yeah. to say and don't don't get me wrong it was very tempting to just go. still go because yeah. the hotel rates for um tokyo and taiwan were plummeting like it was unbelievable you could have some crazy deals for like these five-star hotels and things like that so yeah very tempting <laughs> but reason came through and i'm just grateful you know yeah grateful for our health grateful for our health grateful for the means yeah grateful for more opportunities yeah you know to be able to do stuff like this grateful to be able to see our family more often right. with the the time off over the next two weeks yeah grateful to have more time to work on my business mm -hmm. um work on yourself work on um, myself just Grateful to have more time to go exercise. That's true. That's You've been very busy. I, yeah, and that's some. That's the one thing that I, I let go. You fell off the wagon. I fell off the wagon, but yeah. it's okay. It happens. Gotta just get back on it. I right? think that's the part of like life, right? I mean, it's 
you're it's not a question of if you're gonna like fall off the wagon or break away from lose track maybe Mm -hmm. lose sight of whatever it is you're aiming for um but can you make sure you get back at some point the quicker you can get back on track the better yeah you know and again being grateful that you have an opportunity to get back on the wagon (laughs) because like you said before it's like just waking up the next day that in itself is is a gift Mm -hmm. so pretty huge yeah coming home safely is a gift from work or whatever from wherever you anywhere are. yeah so what would you say then is i mean obviously it's had a pretty big impact on our lives and in a positive way mm-hmm. i feel like we were happier you know when practicing gratitude um what else do you think being grateful or practicing gratitude has helped you with um, I or think it's definitely it's, it's made me feel more fulfilled. I'm not always trying to look for the next high. So does that mean you're just hanging out? You're no, just grateful definitely. for what you have and that's no. it? Settling? It's not the same, right? No, I'm still pursuing for more. Um, but it, I'm not just pursuing it and feeling empty, right? Because I, it's made me realize that I have everything that I need. Now yeah. I'm just you know, fulfilling what I set out for myself, like the next legacy or whatever that is. Yeah. Um, Always growing as a person. Mm -hmm. Uh, It doesn't stop just because I'm grateful um, for, you know, and realizing that I have everything. Yeah. But I think it's helped me achieve more. I think so. When you're in the right state of mind. Yeah, because I'm happier. It's higher. I'm practicing life at a higher frequency. Um, and just just attracting more positiveness into my life, like a, it's like a f- positive flow. Yeah. Versus think, versus before, it's always a struggle. I think you can feel it too. You know how like yeah. when you're when you you've come across people where like when they're in a bad mood, you know they're in a bad mood, and they don't even have to say a word, right? You can just sense that energy. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same, right? When people are in a great mood and you start attracting good things into your life. Same yeah. as bad, right? If you're a negative, negative things tend to happen more frequently, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So they say... It's weird. It's like, um, like they say, like your business is a reflection of who you are. Right? Yeah. If you have the same obstacles over and over or objections... And you kind of have to look at yourself. Yeah, maybe it's not other people or maybe other things. Maybe it's what you're attracting. And that's hard. It is. It's very hard to look inward and then also to let go of your ego and take full responsibility for your life mm-hmm. and what happens to you. You know, um, it's not always somebody else's fault yeah. or other people's fault or whatever. Yeah coronavirus's fault (laughs) you know and i think it's also helped me to be present in the moment right because you're i'm grateful for that moment yeah and i'm not not always just living in the future that's true live in like it helps it really helped ground me smell the flowers a little bit more yeah because before i was always just you know living in the future just running 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 but I would never stop. I mean, it's not a bad thing to yeah. be motivated, ambitious. Yeah. To be focused. I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm not pursuing more, right? But back then, I was never living in the moment, right. in the present, enjoying the journey. Yeah, I was always pers- stressed because I'm always forward. living in the future. Yeah. Or trying to run to the future, but it's, it, how about now? Yeah. How about this moment? This moment is the most real. Yeah. I mean, I, I, tomorrow's not guaranteed. No. And you can't go back in your future to change stuff. I mean, the past. <laughs> the past, yeah. <laughs> the past, I mean. Yeah. You can't go back in the past yeah. to change stuff. But right now, you do have control. At this moment. At this very moment. And I think you you also, um, one of the things we learned was you you are in control of how you feel, too. Mm-hmm. Um, you can choose to be happy. You can choose to be sad. You know, some people like choosing to be sad and like 
wallowing. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's it's always a struggle for sure to try to get yourself, um, you know, to be to understand your own feelings. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice, and that's the thing. Yeah, but gratefulness helps. It helps. I mean, we're not perfect. No, because <laughs> we definitely um, <laughs> fall back in our old ways sometimes. Yes, and, right? and there are moments when I still feel. Um, I still beat myself up. Right. For why am I not like this? Why am I not here? Why you know? Yeah. I still do that at times. It's I'm not perfect. That's human nature. But at least I'm mindful and I'm aware when I'm beating myself up. Like, hey, you need to ease up. Yeah, take a step and back. just take a step back and just be grateful and give yourself some credit when yeah. it's due. Yeah. What's the positive that we can see from this? Yeah. That's true. And, and if you do fall off the wagon or if you don't, uh, you know, you're not 100% consistent with whatever it is you're saying you're going to do, same thing, right? Don't beat yourself up for that. Just move forward. The only time you lose is if you stop trying, yeah. really. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what advice do you have for the audience? I think... Give it a shot, you know? Um, I know that with <laughs> a lot of people talk about being grateful and mindfulness, it's definitely become more popular, morning routines and all these uh, things. And I'm guilty of being a little bit of a hater or a doubter. I'm like, man, what's this morning routine thing? Gratefulness, I'm already grateful. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was definitely a little bit skeptical about going through the process and doing a morning routine, writing in a journal. But I'm a believer now. <laughs> it, it works, at least for me. And I think it works for a lot of people. But you don't know until you at least try it. So that would be my advice is to uh, be more mindful of what you tell yourself um, and be more mindful of, uh, you know, your attitude when you're complaining and things like that. Just take a step back. Find what you are grateful for in this moment now. And then just Put something into place and try it, you know? Yeah, give it 90 days to really form that habit. Yeah. Give it a fair try. Try it out and uh, it, hopefully it helps you in some way. And what's the worst thing that can happen? What, what do you lose from trying it, really? Yeah. Nothing, right? Nothing. Make it can only improve your life. Yeah. And make sure you share your, your journey with us. Yeah, that would be really to, nice. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. Yeah. See, uh, let us know how it's impacted you or, um, you know, how what you found helpful if you actually go implement some of this stuff. Yeah. Let us know what you're doing. So maybe we can see if we can implement that into our own routine. Mm -hmm. Everybody's well. different. Yeah. You got to do what works for you. That's the that's the big thing. But at least going for it, taking a step, taking some action and trying it. There's nothing to lose from it. It can only help you in your life so with that i i don't have anything else that's it share your journey with now. us and that's it and make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're on youtube yes download the podcast if you're listening to us on give, on apple podcast give us a five-star rating yeah. <laughs> that'll help us out and subscribe to us on our instagram page yep that's it. Where Until next time. Bye. Bye.